Hello everyone, welcome back to my studio. I'm so excited to join you guys again today to do another draw along of another awesome animal from the Phillips Park Zoo. Jen Keller here, by the way. Um, so today we are going to welcome the newest uh, wolves that have come to the Phillips Park Zoo. This is Goblin and Scabe. And um, I'm super excited to draw them with you guys today. Well, we're actually just gonna draw a goblin, but um, yeah, but I'm super excited to draw a goblin with you today. So let's get started. So here we go. We are going to start out with a circle about three quarters of the way in to mark for the skull. So what three quarters of the way in, you wanna leave enough, leave enough room Sorry about that. To uh, for the rest of his body, but you don't want it teeny tiny either. So three quarters of the way into your paper, you want to get that circle, and then we're gonna mark out his muzzle here. So you're gonna take a diagonal line, sort of coming from underneath. This is it, underneath his skull, and then another one sort of coming on top to mark out his muzzle. For those of you that don't know, that's what that's called, the part of the snout that comes up. Um, and then it's almost like an ice cream cone that you get out of the package and the bottom has been broken off. We want another diagonal line coming down like this, right? So once you get that in there, now we're gonna to start to map out his body and we're gonna use this head to measure to make sure we get all our, it's called proportions, right? So for those of you that don't know, proportions are how big or how small something is in relation to other shapes and forms. So we're gonna measure his head. And his head, I've done this before, but I, so I know it's about three heads wide. And his chest starts about uh, you know, you can guesstimate about the middle of his head. So let's start that measurement right, bring it down underneath his head. So we want one, two, three, about three heads, a little bit more than three heads, you know, give or take. And that way we know how big to make his body because otherwise you're just kind of guessing. And so this is how we, a lot of times we do it when we're working from a source. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna map out some of the structure of his body. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about anatomy here because I think it's important when you're drawing and understanding animals about how they are structured. So he's got, you know, he's got the spinal column, the neck, this is his neck. They're kind of looking up, something has got their attention neckline is going to come down and then he's got this nice big chest cavity now we're going to draw it to sort of take up the space we're not going to do the whole thing we're going to think about that rib cage in there right so we want sort of this chest cavity in there and it's going to come out again remember that marker that you had there this body like a nice big oval get that structure in there right and it's gonna go about three quarters of the way over. So then we're gonna come back down around. We're gonna fill out the rest of his body. So we're gonna come, to get draw a line sort of coming from this oval and this nice round shape almost kind of works well for his shoulder blades. And then it's gonna dip down and around. Then you're gonna do a curved line down around where his rump is, just like that, just like that. We're gonna come back and then we're gonna kind of complete this body shape. So again, they're looking up. Most of the time, wolves in general, when they're in a relaxed state and <clears throat> just walking around, their head will be at the same level as their shoulder blades. Now, dogs aren't necessarily like that wolves are. An interesting fact, these guys are actually crossbred wolf and uh, they have some dog DNA in them as well, which is pretty cool. So anyway, so we're going to come back down 
And again, this neck kind of comes out underneath here. And it's going to come down and around underneath his body. Underneath that cavity. And so that, now you have kind of a basic body structure there going on. Um, yeah, so I'll give you guys a second. Uh, so yeah, so I read that these guys just got adopted back in March. Um, they were taken from, I guess, another zoo that was closing, and so we're so lucky to have them. Um, and they are actually have dog DNA, like I said, and wolf DNA. Um, but they legally can't be out and about. They're considered wild animals because of that wolf DNA. So we're going to come back here, and we're going to start to mark out uh, his ears. So the ears kind of come out, if you can imagine, they come out from the skull. So we're going to do a curved line coming up. And again, if you guys watched along with my, um, with the uh, Tonka, the ear shape is kind of similar. I'm going to think of it as a rounded triangle. And then it comes over. And then a little further out, we're going to have this ear, again, diagonal line. But they're not pointy pointy like a house cat, right? They're a little rounded, a little more rounded, these guys are. Unlike, let's say, a coyote, those really big pointy ears, much pointier and much bigger than these guys do. All right, give you guys a second. Gonna do a little catching up. Uh, another cool fact about wolves is that um, though they're seen, they are an apex predator, there's never been on record a human actually being killed by wolves. They actually like to stick to themselves. I always like to say, Little Red Riding Hood lied. All right, so now that we've got this basic body structure going on, we're gonna come in and, and fill out the rest of, rest of him. So we're gonna come in and do these legs here. So we're gonna start about right about, if you see, this is his elbow, and it comes down about a little bit past that neck right here. So another interesting thing about dogs or canines, they have their shoulders are up here, right? Like you don't have to draw this, I'm just showing you. The shoulder blade is up here. So it's also called their withers. And then this is almost like their arm, if you think of it. This is their elbow, this is the bone here. This is their elbow. And then that's gonna come down. Actually, it's probably more like this, but this is their elbow and you can do a little marker for that. And then you're gonna draw a line down, and let's measure, actually, let's measure this. Their le his legs are about as long as his body. So let's make sure we got that measurement right. So this bone is gonna come down here, and then about three quarters of the way down, this is his ankle. And that comes down into their paws, which are their toe bones. This is very interesting. So this whole part, this whole part, is actually it's actually their whole foot so they're pretty much walking on their toes all the time so there's that this one actually get it more straight but that's how that's why sometimes you'll get that divot there right and then we're gonna do this this leg is kind of coming out from right underneath the middle so we'll do a little line to mark that this comes here mark there just a straight line we're just marking the anatomy of, uh, of our wolf there we go make sure you guys have that down and if you look this foot is just a teeny bit behind the other foot they're not right in a row and that's what we call perspective right because he's kind of more three quarters then he is a, a profile, just a tiny bit three quarter. All right. Now we're going to move on to his hind legs here. And again, another interesting fact, this hind legs, the bones, this is the hips. The hips are back here. And then this right here, where that's kind of that, that chunky part, that's his knee right there, and then again, that goes, gonna draw a line straight back, 
There's his ankle, and this is his foot, right? So again, I think understanding how animal body parts correlate to our own body parts um, kind of helps us understand when we're drawing them. And then the other one just sort of echoes behind, and we don't, we don't need to do that one because we're just going to fill that in later. So now that we have this structure down, we're going to go in and uh, fill, out the, fill them out. So let's go in. Structure down. We're going to draw those muscles. So we're going to draw a line on the outside. And then another, this diagonal line is going to come up from here. Around that bone. And then we have this foot. And here, this leg is sort of coming in front. Right? So again, this is going to come down and around. When you draw their paws, you want to think about you have this like diagonal line coming up and out because it's almost like their toes are scrunched up. That's their claws. Unlike cat, big cats, like we talked about before, canines do not have retractable claws. So we're going to work in that. And now I think we have a lot of confusing lines and it's time to erase. Let's go in and erase a bunch of this stuff. And then we can double check our structure. Right. Okay. I'm used to drawing much closer to my paper. <laughs> I have to uh, have it a little further away from me so you guys can see it. So you're not looking at my and shirt pull time. All right, and we can go ahead and erase those, okay. But we're gonna leave this line here. I'm gonna leave that line right there. All right. So, we're gonna come back around here and do this hind leg here. And again, this is going to come in front of his body. That's his knee. Kind of guide your line around that body structure. And then this large structure, that's, of course, his hips and his rump. And there's all sorts of muscles and stuff in there. And then it comes down to here, and it's just ligaments and tendons and... We're not going to forget his tail. One uh, important part about when you're drawing the tail is that the tail is connected to that spinal column. So you want to make sure that that tail is coming right out of the back like that. It doesn't come out of the middle of the bum, right? It comes straight out of the back. And then the fur sort of grows off of it. And so we'll just draw a little. line for the tail and then you can kind of erase that line but we'll have a little bit of it's called overlapping with that hind leg oops sorry like I said drawn a little further away and then this other hind leg is just right echoing the one in the back so we're just gonna do a real just kind of shadow that other line so you've got this structure in there. And then we're gonna erase that. Okay. 
So I apologize if I'm going a little fast. I do want to make sure that I get this whole guy done. But as you can see, now we have some good bones, <laughs> pun intended, some good structure for goblin. So now we're going to come in here. Pencils are getting dull. We're going to come in. You can kind of emphasize those lines. We're going to work on getting his facial structure done here. So, for those of you that were with me before, we like to sort of do a light mark of where that the eyes are going to go through that head, and then this snout actually we did this connecting line but it actually kind of you're going to take that line and it's going to come in a little bit more like that right i'm going to do a little tiny bit of overlapping there get that snout right in there And then we're going to do his nose, which is almost in this shape, I think it looks almost like a diamond, because again, it's three quarters, so a little bit of a diagonal here, and a little bit of a diagonal here, and then you can kind of lightly, lightly fill that in. And then we can see his lips here, he's kind of, I feel like he's kind of pursing his lips. Sure, when this picture was taken, but feel like they're just checking out the home territory. So the, you know, canine lips kind of loose. Sometimes they look frowny. Sometimes they look smiley. This guy looks a little smiley. We're gonna bring that line out, and it comes out about halfway at the head. Now we're gonna come back in here. And do his eye again almost like a football I think we talked about that before I like to kind of mark it I think his nose got a little a little bigger than his actual nose is but that's okay it doesn't have to be perfect right and that's the great thing you can always that's the thing about drawing you never really get it perfect the first time you kind of have to push and pull and erase and come back and kind of do it over and over and over again. Make my nose a little smaller. But actually, technically speaking, wolves do have really long snouts like that. And since he is crossbred, I feel like his snout is a little more narrow than you would see in a traditional wolf. So, now that we've got that sort of basic structure and you can go in his ear. They have lots of, I'm going to draw a line right here. And then they have lots of fluff in those ears to protect them. And then another diagonal line for the ear up here. There we go, we got kind of a basic structure in there. And now we can come back and do a couple little lines in here for his paws.
And then this guy is almost completely in shadow. So you can just kind of darken that in there. And up here, I feel like his back is a little, we're gonna, we wanna make sure to get that shoulder blade in there. And then I'm gonna bring his back structure up a little bit. Make sure so you guys can see it. So yeah, so there you go. There's the basic structure of our canine. Now, we don't have any fur or anything in here, so I'm gonna give you a couple little tips and tricks about drawing fur here, because I obsessively try to flex with this eye to get it right. <laughs> um, and uh, so you don't have to draw every single piece of fur. What you can do is kind of a little, you know, Jagger here's and there to sort of get that structure right. And you can do a little shading underneath his neck, get that neck to kind of stand out. And the hind legs are always going to have a little more, it's going to be pushed back a little bit more than the. Uh, darker because they're under shadow and then kind of have a floating a floating dog so I like to or a wolf wolf dog I like to get a little uh, shadow in there and then another a quick tip drawing the fur in the tail like remember I talked about how you know this is actually you know it's a part of the spinal column right so you want to make sure that's connected and then the fur grows off of it so a lot of times you're gonna have a little more fur. Think of it as growing off of that tip. Like that. A little shading underneath. And then also when you wanna draw fur, when you're doing your shading, some hatching lines, you wanna think about the way that fur is growing, right? So they have this kind of great that kind of stems off of their face. So, you know, you want to think about how that fur is growing when you're working on your shading. You want to have more shading on the tummy because that's not going to see as much light. Right? He's got some shading back here. And there we go, keep trying to flex with his eye. But there you go. And then you can kind of push and pull. And this photo is actually on the website, on the, or uh, not the website, the Phillips Park Zoo uh, Facebook page. So you can check it out and you can put in, now that you know your basic structure, you can put in skate if you want, you can push and pull in here, and let me show you a couple little tricks here. So this is one I worked on earlier, but you can see for the shading, how the, how I drew the hatching in the direction that the fur is going, right? So yeah, so there you go. There is beautiful goblin. Yeah, so that's it. So thank you guys so much for joining me and joining us at Aurora Public Art. I want to give a special shout out to Jen and Kate over at Aurora Public Art. Thank you so much for hosting me and allowing me to share my passion of drawing animals with everyone. I'd like to give a special thanks to the Phillips Park Zoo for sharing your beautiful animals with us and sharing these photos and letting us draw them. And I just want to thank everyone who's watching. So if you drew an animal, if you drew a wolf today, uh, be sure to post them in the comments. I really want to see your work. If you have any questions, you can go ahead and message me. And just, I hope everyone is doing well. And stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. Bye.